in a while, so I thought I'd make a quick one. Um, I don't know how quick this is going to be. This is uh, me working on this uh, Tektronix TDS540 oscilloscope again. Basically, what I'm doing is, is I'm putting the, or trying to, enable the 1M option, which gives me 50,000 data points. And I've upgraded all of the RAM. This is a very early model uh, TDS540 scope, and it had the smaller 2K RAMs um, in the acquisition board. I've changed all of those, and actually I did that a while back, to uh, the 8K RAMs. And I just was able to make a GPIP interface just recently. <clears throat> I think I actually showed that. There it is, if anyone is interested. I made that myself uh, using a Adreno, Arduino and uh, some software that I managed to find on the internet. I didn't write it myself. Um, and I enabled the 1M option in software um, in the in VRAM right here and I was getting even with the software enabled I was getting that the memory was inadequate for doing the uh, 50,000 point option the 1M option so I discovered to my dismay if you can see here that these chips even on the CPU board were the smaller chips these are 32K chips. The later boards, the CPU boards, have 128K chips. I have one of them that I've already installed. Um, that's these chips right here. If I can get this thing open with one hand, I'll, uh, I'll try and show you all. Okay, here we go. All right, here's the new chips, 128K a piece. Um, and they basically just fit in here. I've already removed the, uh, the old chips. And um, I'm going to install these new ones. Hopefully I didn't burn anything up. And hopefully that will enable a 50,000 point option, the 1M option. Another thing I'm trying out as well is I'm trying out new fluxes, which I'm going to report on. This is a tacky flux that I have from um, SRA solder. And this is another tacky flux that I have from Amtech. And I use both of these uh, removing the chips. And they both seem to work equally as well, although I think the Amtech is better. But I'm going to reserve final judgment until after I resolder everything. I'm going to be using both of those. They're pretty close. I'm going to use, be, be using both of those um, as my flux agent. And uh, I'll be reporting back to you all which one I prefer. I'd really like to show it on camera. But I don't have a fancy camera. I basically use my cell phone and I can't solder with one hand. Uh, another thing also I want to do, let you all see is that this is an NVRAM. It has a battery in it. These, this contains all the calibration constants as well as all the other non-volatile um, data. This thing is way, way overdue to just uh, give out. I've already, I didn't put this on camera, but already I put this on a, uh, a socket. I desoldered it. Hopefully I won't hurt this. And re-soldered in um, re and socketed it uh, using my uh, desoldering gun there. Also, and then I used this programmer from from Canada to uh, extract the uh, data and save it so if I lose anything I can replace it I also upgraded the firmware on this machine this machine's very new as I said and it had 1.08 e firmware 
and I managed to buy a board with the 2.16e firmware and I've upgraded that as well and I'll be showing so anyway this video will be going on um, I'll be putting in the new chips hopefully I didn't burn anything up and I'll let you all see what happens and uh, we'll be testing out the flux as well so stay tuned